Thing. Order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Home Office exclusively told Sky News the government hadn't previously done enough to tackle dirty money in London because it had other priorities. It comes as a prominent Russian dissident in exile claims the government is turning a blind eye to money laundering. Our business correspondent Adam Parsons reports. Across London, there are pockets where Russia's billionaires have their homes. That's Roman Abramovich's house. There's one of Andrei Gontorenko's four homes in the middle of the capital. Lena Blavatnik, the billionaire philanthropist, lives there. These are homes valued at tens of millions of pounds, a cluster of Russian jewels. A short stroll from Buckingham Palace, a house is refurbished. Russian money is employing people here, paying for all this work. This is the roof terrace. Uh, below us we've got the cinema, we've got staff changing areas, staff bedrooms, service kitchens for staff uh, and for uh, like a commercial kitchen for, for the uh, potential end client. Uh, and then below that we've got a cinema, steam room, uh, experience shower and a gym area. And when this project is finished, it'll be a home worth around £30 million. Everything must be to the best standard possible uh, and money is no object. London does benefit from having wealthy foreign investors whose money trickles down through employment and spending. But there are other Russians in the UK whose wealth is now under scrutiny, and some have suggested economic sanctions against them as a way of punishing Vladimir Putin. There are more than 100,000 Russians in London alone, including the owner of this high-end wine shop a man who made a fortune in the Russian mobile phone business before being exiled by Putin's government. Probably I will never come back. How does that make you feel? No, I feel quite upset. He is no friend of Putin, so would he welcome sanctions against Russia's oligarchs? What you should do to punish Vladimir Putin, my answer is punish Vladimir Putin personally. How do we do that? Not, not, uh, Oh, people who live here for 15 or 20 years. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And if uh, some oligarchs who live here and will be sanctions against them, and Putin will say, yeah, I was right. They are enemies. Back home. Take your money. Finish your investment. Back home to Russia. Uh, who, who is winner? Putin. So maybe that's the challenge. How to decide between those who bring legitimate investment to the UK and those whose money is more open to scrutiny. Roman Borisovich was once a senior executive at Russia's largest insurance company. Now he campaigns for transparency and he brought us to look at a luxury flat in the heart of Westminster. Business apartment. Uh, just a level beneath the top, with black railings, actually a double apartment, two apartments combined, were purchased by the fifth most powerful bureaucrat in Russia, after Vladimir Putin. Uh, Igor Ivanovich Shuvalov, deputy, deputy prime minister, who is in charge of the economy and finance, bought this place for an equivalent of 112 of his annual declared incomes. The challenge is proving corruption. And that often starts with tracing where unexplained wealth actually comes from. You can quite legally buy a property in this country using an offshore company to cover your identity. Makes the money a lot harder to follow, and some say that's a recipe for money laundering. But there are thousands of properties in the UK sold in that way. This is Lowndes Square in central London, and here 40% of the properties are registered to anonymous offshore companies. It makes this the most secret street in Britain. And there are now growing calls for the government to do more to investigate this sort of hidden wealth. There are now greater powers to investigate, notably unexplained wealth orders, which allow police to force people to explain 
how they became wealthy. But some still need convincing that the UK is serious about chasing down dubious money. Vladimir Ashokov is a Russian dissident who now lives in London. Of course, there is the lobby of enablers of kleptocrats, these lawyers, property state agents, um, bankers that service this corrupt flow. Even in a democratic political system like Britain's, there are special interests that would like to um, skew the government policy in certain direction. And one of such influences is, of course, that Britain would turn blind eye to corrupt money. So has the UK really been lax in its pursuit of money laundering? It's a claim we put to the government. I don't think by any government it was a premeditated mistake. I don't think they sat down and deliberately said, well, we're not going to do anything about it. But I think what they did was they were focusing on other priorities at the time. Uh, we have committed uh, with draft legislation we due this year or, and next year, we'll hopefully introduce it, uh, on forcing overseas companies and overseas individuals who own property in the United Kingdom to register that in a public register so we'll all be able to know who owns what in London. Britain is a country that welcomes wealthy foreigners and that brings benefits and challenges. If there is a move here, it is a slow flight from secrecy to transparency. Adam Parsons, Sky News. Well, joining us from central London is Duncan Haynes, the Director of Policy at the anti-corruption charity Transparency International UK. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Definitely. How do you prove dirty Russian money is being bought, used to buy up properties, large properties in London and elsewhere in the United Kingdom? Well, without the uh, public register that the minister announced there in your package, it's very hard to do so. Uh, because uh, complex corporate structures using offshore financial centres that provide secrecy about who really owns the companies that own British property uh, hide uh, the patterns of uh, investment uh, and make it very difficult to go after and to crack down on uh, corrupt money here in London, as, as the Prime Minister wishes to do. The, the problem, unfortunately, is that register that the Minister uh, has announced uh, will not be available to him to help with this work for another three years. And it really is important that we find a way to accelerate those plans if they're going to help us in the fight against money laundering in the UK. You, you were a member of, of Parliament in a previous life. Had you raised concerns while you were in Parliament? Because um, the, the feeling is that not enough MPs spoke up about this issue previously. Well, uh, many MPs, uh, including myself while I was there, were concerned about uh, Britain's network of offshore financial centres, its overseas territories and crown dependencies. Often the debate about them uh, relates to uh, tax policies in those jurisdictions. Uh, but uh, the secrecy that uh, they afford to people setting up corporate networks it is at the core of this problem with uh, illicit money being, being laundered. Uh, and so uh, it, it's, it's not good enough that they continue uh, to operate what are private registers, uh, which are only accessible uh, under very specific circumstances by UK law enforcement, when UK companies uh, are now on a, a public register, so that if a UK company owns property in any of the streets in your package in London, people can see who is the, the real owner of that property in a way they can't if that uh, company is, is registered in somewhere like the British Virgin Islands. Um, the Russian perspective is that there is double standards coming from the United Kingdom, because on the one hand, you had um, lawyers and wealthy businesses welcoming Russian money uh, in the 1990s and, and after that, after the fall of the uh, Soviet Union, uh, and now we're being told that they need to be clamped down on. Well, obviously, it's, it's not criminal to be a wealthy Russian in London. Uh, we need to be alert to the risk of the proceeds of crime and corruption being laundered through the UK economy wherever they come from. Uh, and it's important that we have uh, laws and investigatory powers uh, and, and good defences against money laundering, uh, which uh, apply to uh, illicit wealth uh, that is coming here from, from Russia in some of the laundromats that have been exposed, but also to uh, the proceeds of crime and corruption from other parts of the world. Uh, Duncan Ames, thank you.